Let's get started. So I'm actually the co-founder and CEO of Patronus AI. Uh, we're actually based in New York City as well. And we were the first, industry first, LM evaluation and testing company. So everything that we're focused on is how do we get language models and language model systems to actually work for real world use cases for enterprises. So I'm super excited to not only talk about who we are, what we do, and where we fit in, but also to give you a quick demo about how the product actually works and how a lot of different types of enterprise customers are using it today. So let me actually just start off with a little bit about myself uh, and actually my co-founder as well, who's actually not here, but she's in New York City as well. So my background is actually primarily in applied ML, especially ML interpretability and explainability. Uh, I actually first started building an NLP in 2015, uh, back when IBM Watson was actually the frontier of NLP. And uh, it was actually just uh, incredibly surprising to see, of course, how much growth there's been in just NLP in general, especially over the last two to three years. So I actually started my career as an early day scientist on the Oculus team at Meta. This was actually after Oculus got acquired, uh, back when it was 2,000 people. And then over a few years, it actually grew to 20,000 people. Uh, and the Meta name change happened as well, where it went from Facebook to Meta. Uh, and a lot of the work that I did there was very focused around things like causal inference, advanced experimentation, and ultimately being able to help a large organization really make a lot more ML-driven business decisions. And so uh, over that time, uh, a lot of the work that I ultimately did ultimately resulted in a large platform team and a large marketing budget as well. And so a lot of the things that I've thought about is how do we make uh, models a lot more usable, especially in an organizational or business context? And actually at the same time, my co-founder Rebecca was leading responsible NLP initiatives at Facebook AI Research, where she actually worked with the folks that trained Llama and Llama 2 uh, and actually trained the first model that was trained with a fairness objective called Fairberta. And so a lot of the things that we've thought about over the last few years is all about language model evaluation. And so over the past year, actually since we got started before last summer, uh, there have been just an awesome number of folks that have joined us from different types of organizations. And actually our company is pretty unique in the sense that we are very research focused, especially when it comes to language model evaluation. And the main reason for that is evaluation itself is very much still an open research problem and it's been that way for many years. And of course, uh, the reason why we still continue to see issues like hallucinations, unexpected behavior, and other types of unsafe outputs is because it's just a really, really challenging problem, which I'll get into in a second. What's challenging is that ultimately, language model systems are really just sometimes unreliable in production. And the problem is that there's really no easy way to test them at scale. And why is that? And so obviously I think we'd all agree that there's just such a wide space of LM behavior that makes it very hard to not only achieve testing coverage, but also to actually what to actually define what testing coverage even means. And so what ends up happening is that you end up having to uh, manually test things. So you end up having to, to review things by hand. And we actually talk to large, lots of larger companies that spend, in some cases, tens of millions of dollars on human evaluation, where they actually manually create test cases and actually manually grade outputs in spreadsheets as well. And so what ends up happening is that manual evaluation is very slow and expensive. And so when we talk to a lot of developers, what we've seen is that they end up just testing a couple times, and they call it a vibe check. So essentially they try it once or twice, they hope it works, and then they just put it out into production. Uh, and so uh, the big problem here, of course, is that there just isn't a well-established or standardized framework to actually unit test or integration test uh, different types of LLMs. And uh, what the result of that is, is that there's really just no way to tell if a new version of an LLM is better or worse. There's no way to understand if a small quantized version of a model is better or worse than a larger version of a model, especially as you look at the different trade-offs between them. Uh, and there's also no way to really compare things like commercial models and open source models. And I think some of us might have seen some of the, 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 the results from the paper last year where people have talked about how GPT-4 has regressed in some ways over the last few months compared to where it started, and especially even perhaps compared to, to GPT-3.5. And so those types of uh, results are just not very transparent right now because it's very hard to actually evaluate quality and performance of language models. And so the final thing that kind of relates to this is uh, the fact that it's actually just really hard to measure progress in AI right now. And the reason is the way that we've traditionally measured progress is through open source academic benchmarks. But what's happened over the past year is that because a lot of these benchmarks are open source, you actually see a lot of uh, language model developers who are just outright training on benchmarks, which uh, if all of us aren't aware, it's a very unethical thing to do, especially if you're a machine learning practitioner. 
Uh, and so because of that, uh, it's become very hard to measure progress. Uh, and one thing that I mentioned as a part of that is we're actually going to make a big announcement around that tomorrow morning. So stay tuned and uh, follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter, you know, the candid, the, the, the things that I have to say. <laughs> uh, but we're actually making an announcement around this tomorrow where we're going to be talking about why it's incredibly important to actually use closed source benchmarks in order to properly measure not only progress in AI across the industry, but even just progress in your own language model system inside your company. And so uh, what, what ultimately is incredibly important is just being able to properly understand where exactly things fit in, uh, especially when it comes to evaluation. And typically, as soon as you have some kind of an LLM or an LLM system in your hand, you're pretty much ready to go in terms of evaluation, testing, benchmarking, monitoring, and so on. Some of the different types of companies that we've worked with uh, so far have been incredibly interested in not only the evaluation techniques in our product itself, but also uh, the first step of this entire pipeline, which is everything related to evaluation data sets, two of which actually were incredibly popular last year, Enterprise PAI, which was something that we developed with Mosaic, and Finance Bench, which was actually something that we developed with folks at Carlisle and was covered by CNBC and Fortune in December. And so what I'll uh, focus on in the last couple of minutes here is uh, a quick demo. Uh, we actually have both not, not only in a web platform, but also an API solution that a lot of different types of companies are using. And they're able to use this across any surface and any interface where the core competency is all about helping you catch problems like hallucinations and other types of unexpected behavior with your language model systems. So I thought I would actually just focus on just the web platform itself, just because it's much more visual. But of course, uh, we can always talk offline about our broader product offerings. And so the first thing I would mention is that the primary way that a lot of people are using a web platform is for the offline language model evaluation and experimentation solutions. And so what they actually do is they end up creating a new project, they initiate an evaluation run, they set up the LLM or the LLM system, and then they actually uh, upload or auto-generate an evaluation data set and or select one that is off the shelf from us, and then they ultimately decide the way that they actually want to evaluate. So they actually define the criteria or what we call evaluator, evaluator profile, or they select one off the shelf from us, which we support many of. So I thought I would just quickly go into what the actual final output looks like in the interest of time. And so uh, at the end of this, you actually get an evaluation report, which is something that we see folks that are not just engineers looking at and sharing across the company. And what they're able to do is they're able to really be able to uh, understand uh, where test cases actually passed and failed, uh, and also give expl uh, understand explanations for why they might have passed and failed to get additional insight, but also even give feedback on the evaluation itself. And so the more feedback you give to the evaluator, the better the evaluation system becomes over time. And so there's this feedback loop that's extremely interesting here. So the example that I have right here is actually one that is specific to finance, especially given that we're in New York City. Uh, and uh, what I actually asked GPT 3.5 to do is to, uh, is, is, is to pretend that it's a chat assistant that only answers questions about finance. And if it's not about finance, it should answer that it cannot answer. Uh, and so the goal here is to really test for topicality and relevance. So as you can kind of see here, uh, if you ask the question, what's the weather today, it actually says I cannot answer, so it does a good job. Uh, and so if I scroll down to an example of a failure, like this one here, you ask the question, can you calculate the ROI of a workout class on your work happiness? And the GPT 3.5 actually goes ahead and answers the whole question, and it tells you how to do that, which obviously, if you're a bank, you wouldn't want to see that happening. So this is an example of a failure that we caught with our automated system that uh, is something that now companies are able to use with the API to be able to prevent failures like this in real time. So that's an example of uh, one of the offline features that companies use. And the final thing I wanted to mention uh, as a part of this demo is actually our monitoring observability feature. So this is something that a lot of companies are using in conjunction with the Patronus API. And it's something that they use in order to have real-time visibility into how their language model systems are performing. So it's very similar to what you just saw, but instead it's just all real-time. Uh, and so you can think of this almost like a sentry-like interface for language models. And so what you kind of see here is uh, once you're actually using the API and you have logs coming in, you can actually see which, uh, which types of uh, queries to the LLM actually passed or failed. And so here's an example of one that actually failed. And this is something that I created just for this demo. Uh, this is where within a, a retrieval system, we're actually testing for the accuracy of the retrieve context from the vector database, a vector database like Weaviate, for example. Uh, and so 
what you can kind of see here is that when you pass in a language model input and output, uh, as well as the retrieve context, what you'll be able to do is to understand if the retrieve context itself is uh, good according to the original model input. And we not only produce a score, we tell you if it passes or fails, and we even give you an explanation on this. And so you can kind of see, I actually wrote this retrieve context out by hand. Clearly, it's incredibly bad. It's about cats and data-driven NYC. So of course, I should have gotten a fail here. But this is an example of something that you can now do in real time using your product. So essentially, you can use your product inside uh, with language models or retrieval systems or agents or routing architectures and ultimately have very quick visibility into system quality and performance to get you the best results and to get you happy users. So that's all I have for today. Thanks so much for having me and uh, see you soon.